I accidentally met Lori Baker. I learned my basic lessons of architecture from him. It's like a Guru Shishya way of doing. There was no awareness about conservation. Nobody thought about conserving old buildings. Nobody used to think about these things. Nusiris is mentioned by Ptolemy. Nusiris is uh, mentioned by Pliny. Nusiris is mentioned in the Sangam literature, which are older than 2000 years. If you look at the Nusiris as a place, you will be able to tell the history of the world as part of it. There are three synagogues. The oldest mosque is here. The oldest European monument is here. The oldest synagogue is here, some of the oldest Catholic churches are here. The place is full of history. It's primarily a conservation project because conservation of heritage is the most important thing. It's also a tourism project where people can come and learn about history, learn about culture. The tourism is moving more towards cultural tourism. It is moving more towards spiritual tourism. And Musiris has both to offer. According to our initial survey, there are more than 400 historic buildings in the area. Now, if I look at the Pallium Palace, this was the official residence of the Cochin Prime Minister. And only he used to stay at the building is should be more than 300, 400 years old. The second floor of the building is a steep roof, which is built with the help of the Dutch because in Netherlands they build steep roofs so that they can take care of the snow. So there is an element of the, the Dutch architecture can be seen in the building. So it has been conserved into a museum and the museum is talking about the history of the Cochin princely state and how their relationship with the Portuguese. Portuguese came first, then the Dutch came and then the British came. Nayas used to form a matrilineal system. Here it is the daughters and the mothers who was the puppet. The eldest member of the family is the head of the household of the Pali of Naligat. This is an aristocratic house. There is a courtyard in the house. It's a two-story building, very unusual, uh, especially on the southern part of Kerala. And it has some timber walls which is very unique to the southern Kerala architecture. It was a joint family system. So in that museum, what we are trying to do is to tell the history of how a joint family system existed. What was their source of revenue? There was a caste system. How did the caste system survive? We are trying to tell the portray the history of the family and of the place and the kind of things they use for in the Naligata. Those ex many of the equipments and craft items and utensils are exhibited in the museum. People will get an idea how a rich Naya family aristocrat lived 100 years ago. We are trying to portray through all these museums not only 2000 year old history, we think that even 100 year old, 50 year old history is also equally important. This is the house where Abdul Rahman Sahib was born. He was a freedom fighter. He used to run a newspaper and he was the president of the Kerala Pradesh Congress Committee. So there in that museum, we are trying to talk about the history of the freedom movement and how Abdul Rahman Sahib's life was related. That's a small courtyard. It's a typical Kerala house of a middle class. It's not an aristocratic, much more simpler house, which is there as part of the thing. The Paravur Synagogue is one of the largest synagogues in Kerala. It is a main entrance area building. That was the place where Hebrew was taught. So we restored that. The Heikal or the Ark, the main altar which you see there, is a replica. The original Heikal sitting in the Jerusalem Museum. One of the decisions we took was to restore the Heikal. But we decided to restore it because we felt that it's for India's heritage which has been taken out of India. The synagogue is nothing without the haircut. So what you see are made by the craftsmen from the locality. Wherever the Jews went, they kept their culture, they kept their heritage. So if you look at the Paravo synagogue, you can see the curved brackets which are typically there in Kerala temples. 
So they tried to get some elements of the Kerala architecture too. And that blending of the Kerala and the architecture is what you see in the Paravo synagogue, which is the beautiful synagogue. One of the things which has happened in the Muslim area, three religions came to India through this region. Judaism came to India through this port. Christianity came to India through this port. Christianity came to India much before it came to Europe. Similarly, Islam also came here in the 7th century. It's still the oldest mosque in India. The mosque authorities, the president had called me saying that they would like to restore the mosque. So that's how that mosque was restored. Although it took such a long time, it is done with the approval of the public, Jamaat, there is no decision coming from top, there is no forcible thing. It was not a decision taken by one or two people. Now the mosque is open to the money, everybody thinks it's a good thing which has been done. I did not expect that such a public support will come with the demolition of the minarets and the concrete additions. Now it has become like a pilgrim center. I will say the sacred value of the mosque has increased many times with the removal of the ugly addition, which was not in tune with the heritage of the place. Musiris as a whole is a place for communal harmony. Within one kilometer, you can, in a place called Chedamangalam, there is a mosque, there is a synagogue, there is a temple, there is a church within one kilometer radius. Such a thing you will never find anywhere in the world. But you can see it in Musiris. You can see people living harmoniously, people of various communities. There is a tremendous message that the whole project is conveying to the world. The project is for the future generations. It is important for the future generation of Kerala to grow up with knowledge about heritage and how our ancestors lived. I mean, our cities or our buildings should have a memory. Our history is very important. It's otherwise, it will be like a person without memory. We have to know this. I am seeing this project is a place where every school children will come and visit. Learn about different layers of the history. The tourists can come and learn about the, how their history is linked with the history of Kerala. I want a sustainable model of tourism. I don't want to disturb the peaceful village life which the local community is having. Overall, this should set an example for the other parts of Kerala or other parts of the world that tourism and cultural heritage can be conserved from a community point of view in an entirely different. I'm seeing it also as a developmental project. How can we look at sustainable tourism? Where we are trying to build five-star hotels and market in those countries, there is an alternate way of doing tourism, which is down to earth, where the community is involved, where we are trying to make the people aware of the our own history. At the same time, we're conserving it. We have to see it in a holistic way. And I think uh, I mean, this project will be of great relevance for the future.